Hey, welcome to another live episode of geekoutdoors.com. Actually getting some stuff ready right now. Basically, I'm just starting the movie. Uh, but uh, this week's going to be a little bit shorter, but it's going to be some sweet news. And so, uh, first and foremost, we got the announcement of the $199 Oculus VR machine or headset. And then the Purism Linux phone. And so, uh, let's get right into it because... Over the past few weeks, uh, as early as last week, the last live episode that I did, um, I actually talked about Windows VR, but then it also led to Daydream VR, Virtual Reality, and Augmented Reality. So if you haven't seen that live episode, uh, I will leave a card up there somewhere, or maybe I'll put it in the description area below. I'll talk quite a bit about Virtual Reality. And so it's surprising to me that Oculus, or actually it's Facebook, is actually announcing something that is really different in the VR uh, world. Okay, so if you haven't heard, um, Oculus or Facebook, I'm gonna call it Facebook VR because that's really what it is, just announced a new product called Oculus Go. Okay, and what it is is it's gonna be a $199 affordable Oculus device. Okay, and so if you are familiar with other affordable VR products like say the Google Daydream or the Samsung VR uh, you know that the experience is um, not going to be at the same level as say a full-on Oculus Rift or a HTC Vive but um, I'm positive you know even though I do like this it will be better than something like a super low budget <clears throat> VR device which is anywhere from 10 to 20 dollars in the US okay so what it looks like this model technically wise it will give you a better experience than what you would get at the ultra low budget but what's really different about this is the fact that you do not need to have this connected to a powerful computer and you don't even need to have a smartphone that <clears throat> is really something that none of the other providers have done and with the announcement of Windows VR earlier in the year I thought that was exciting because of the simple fact that they were going to introduce a you know higher quality of VR experience and I think it was like anywhere from $250 to $300 and I think that was a really good price point and it was not going to be made by Microsoft meaning they were going to license this technology out and so I thought that was a really good price point you know it's not definitely not quite as high as the upper end the Oculus Rift or the HTC Vive and then it's not quite as still I would say expensive as like a PlayStation VR because when you buy the VR stuff you just don't have the VR headset right you have to still get the equipment so even right now the Oculus Rift the whole VR package including controllers has actually been dropped to $399 from its original $600 price okay which is a great you know if you want a really high level experience you still need the powerful PC but then it makes it more affordable because oculus they just were not selling this okay because the price is too high for the majority of people and with any of these new technologies I think first and foremost the technology is very important you know you have to get the technology right you know right to the point where people could actually use it and you know the second most important thing after that is you actually have to sell it you know people actually have to have it in their hands and are actually using it and then the final thing for the long term is there actually needs to be really great VR content for that device and support okay and so with all of those things that's very uh, that's very difficult to do okay I mean obviously these companies have been trying virtual reality for years now it's been around for decades and now with these really big technology companies you know it's not easy you know otherwise they would have already been successful with it uh, but with the oculus go vr what i see that's different here is that um, first and foremost it is oculus okay maybe not the same oculus that was started but they are a quote unquote pioneer hey good morning guys how's it going thanks for joining um, and they were the pioneer in offering, you know, a, a high quality VR experience for the masses, you know, with their uh, Oculus Rift. And then when they got bought out by Facebook, then now they have the money, the funding, 
And Facebook has a really huge vested interest, just like all these other technology companies like Google, like Windows, and Apple. They will be joining this 100%. They will be here as well. And so that's first, you know, it's Oculus, i.e., Facebook. So they have the funding and the technology. Secondly, if you actually go to the Oculus Go page, the headset looks really high quality. Okay, um, it looks very similar to the Google Daydream VR, where it looks like a, a mishmash of fabric material and really hard plastics, but it just looks a lot better, you know, in my opinion. It looks very high quality. It comes with this little remote at the end, and it has this uh, spatial sound on here too. You don't even hear like see the earphones. It's, it's like built into the uh, strap, which is kind of different. And obviously at this price point, you're not going to get the same type of uh, fast switching or uh, head tracking control that you get on the high-end VR devices. But I feel, even though I'm not having tried it yet, I think it would be the best uh, solution at that price point. And what's uh, most amazing at this price point is the fact that you will not need to connect it to a device. I think that's extremely powerful. You don't have to connect it to a computer or a smartphone. You know, I kind of thought this was going to be another one where you plug your smartphone in, right? But the fact that it won't have a smartphone required, it really does give you VR on the go, you know, which is the end goal of all these companies with their products. You know, like I said, they will have VR in your glasses or your contact lenses in the future. And maybe it might not be that far away. And so this is a huge step in terms of getting this VR product in people's hands. Okay, that's, you, you need adoption at the beginning. And because it is owned by Facebook, they have the resources to actually go in for the long term. You know, whereas a company like HTC Vive, I don't know if it's going to be around for the long term unless Google, well, actually Google has bought them. So maybe that would be different here uh, next year. Okay. And so this is really great news in my opinion. And the fact that it also works with your existing uh, Oculus VR controllers, that's great for developers. And so if developers are developing on this platform, uh, they don't have to rebuild things from the ground up because it shares a lot of the same technology and it all goes back to the same thing of point number one, get mass adoption, okay? Not only from the consumers, but also the development community as well, okay? Because as we seen before, I talked about before, just because a company has a lot of money, like Microsoft, with their Windows phone, the physical phone, which actually failed, you know, you still need other things to go along with it. So more than likely, once they get this in people's hands and they have content available, then the Facebook side of the company is really going to come in. Okay, and um, I keep talking about this, but from a digital marketing, from an ads standpoint, it's going to be crazy. And because even right now, um, you know, if we are creating ads to display to you, and uh, to display for individuals or businesses, we could put on every single device. Now, with the introduction of VR devices, uh, with the introduction of more wearables, those same ads could be everywhere. And so that's, that's really the end goal with any of these products, to be honest with you. Um, and I did state on the last virtual reality episode, you get people into new technologies, uh, I mean, besides the price point, besides the mass adoption, you get people in through entertainment first, like almost always. That's the easiest entry. Once you get them in, now you're in their ecosystem and now you're in their world quite literally. And so now you can start selling them stuff. So just kind of imagine if you do use Facebook, how long you spend your time on Facebook. You know, even if you don't buy anything, the fact that you spent your precious time on Facebook Constantly looking at your feeds, it's worked. Because uh, the way that Facebook is designed, if you didn't know, um, it's designed to keep you there. Like, it probably does it better than any other platform. There's a lot of uh, psychology behind it. And also, they have very advanced AI uh, to trigger uh, your, um, I forgot, whenever you get happy about something, 
you get endorphins that are released, okay? So they actually have psychologists who help design the way that Facebook looks, the way that it interacts, the little pings that you get, the little sounds. And so your mind automatically associates that with happiness, okay? So faith, that's why you stay on Facebook so long. And then you, it's kind of like an addiction, you know, like smoking, okay? And so all these companies do the same thing. When they have their designers and they think about the, not only the UX design, but they really put a lot of psychology into it. And uh, they're going to do the same thing with VR. So just imagine how much time you spend on Facebook right now and just multiply that when it gets to VR. And so it's going to be interesting. I think from many different angles, from a technology standpoint, uh, from an entertainment standpoint, from a business standpoint, um, I really think that this will, out of all the VR products that's been released in the past few years, I really think this will actually be the one that will be a hit, okay? And then, or at least get mass adoption. And then after that, my prediction, I don't think Google VR is going to be number two, um, you know, once they finish purchasing HTC's assets. I think it's going to be Apple. That's my opinion. You know, Samsung's already doing VR, but once Apple releases a VR product, that's pretty much guaranteed. You know, God says a very own real life version of the film Surrogates. Yeah, um, and what God is talking about here, there's a movie with Bruce Willis, uh, Bruce Willis, um, and it's a, 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 a world where people physically live it, live it through a, a robots. Okay, and it's like you, you're in the real world, but you're not, you know, so that's, that was the movie, movie, uh, hey, Lance, good morning, thanks for joining, Lance, and, uh, if you didn't see earlier, Lance, and Gaza, um, this will be a shorter episode, so I'm only going to be talking about two topics, okay, so, uh, right now, I am talking about the Oculus Go, and how I think at $199, and also, uh, with the fact that they, it is going to be, uh, able to run without attaching it to an expensive powerful computer or even to your smartphone I think it's really gonna make an impact you know and of course oculus Facebook Facebook a lot of money so it looks like it's gonna have long staying power um, it says arriving early 2018 so I'm thinking that's probably January and God's able to say just as so long as you touch on Blade Runner 2049 at the end please <laughs> Lance oculus geek outdoors go version yeah Lance um you know, maybe I shouldn't use Go because Facebook might <laughs> might sue me. <laughs> so I don't I don't yet have any uh, trademarks at that level on the Go part. But who knows? Facebook might come after me in the future. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So expect a name change. <laughs> hey, good morning, Parmos. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Yeah, you're right. Um, so if you go to the Oculus Go page, you know they have some nice uh, marketing stuff. And um, from what I could tell right now. Uh, it's meant to like be very similar to um, like I said the Samsung VR the Daydream VR but just at a much higher level so it's more like entertainment and uh, more mass consumer friendly okay so watching VR movies stuff like that but I really think the quality is going to be better than anything else we've experienced at that level so I am excited about it um, I whenever it comes out I more than likely I will get it you know um, I don't know how much time I'm going to spend on it, but I, I think it's a I think it's a really great VR headset, you know, in terms of the technology that it's involved. Uh, but you know me, I mean, I'm, I do marketing at the end. Uh, once they start marketing a whole bunch of stuff and start collecting every piece of information, then who knows? If, if I could figure out a way to put a distro on the VR headset, then I'll probably do that. But you'll probably lose the VR experience then. So hopefully uh, a, a Linux distribution or um, will create a VR Linux version. That would be cool, you know? And speaking of Linux, um, let's get into the second point of this news, which uh, I think is pretty, pretty big. And um, other people, hey, good morning, K.I. Tooney. Thanks for joining. And other people have been talking about this for weeks on the live episodes. I've been talking about it, you know, how we, um, to be honest, you know, I mean, all of us who use Linux, we love freedom, you know, and, you know, uh, as geeks, we use, in my opinion, geeks love freedom and we use whatever's best for us. And for the majority of us, when it comes to a desktop operating system, we really enjoy using Linux because of the freedom that it provides. 
okay? And unfortunately, even with something like Android, which has a Linux kernel, but honestly, it's not really a Linux operating system, you know? I mean, it was at the beginning, but now it's becoming less and less of it. That's my opinion, okay? Because there's a lot more controls uh, getting put in place underneath everything. Um, a lot more data collection, okay? So, and it makes sense, okay? I mean, it makes sense. The whole point of Android was to get people onto Google's platform, into their ecosystem. That's the whole point of it. I mean, I people could argue with that, but that's really why it was made, and it makes sense. And so, in the future, it will be really super duper, more controlled, more locked down, regardless if it runs on an open source kernel or not you know, or an open source dish, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? And so, just because it's open source does not mean it can't be controlled, okay? And so, um, I think Rose has been talking about this week after week, and it is the, uh, the crowdfunded phone, which is Libre 5, by a company called Purism, okay? So, what they were doing was they started a crowdfunding campaign and their goal was $1.5 million. And to be honest with you, for a Linux phone, I did not think it was gonna make it there. And the reason I say that is because Linux, as you know, it's not popular to the masses. I mean, just go out and uh, in most countries, especially here in the United States, Ask somebody about Linux or ask them what distro that they're running on their computer. I would say 99% will have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Okay? But if you ask them about an Android phone, they'll know what that is. Like, at least they'll know it's a Droid, but they won't know anything else. Right? And so, in this case, I'm very pleasantly surprised that they have made their funding go. And there are nine days left. So, if you look up Purism phone or Libra 5, uh, you can donate to it. Um, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to do that myself. And it starts at uh, $20 if you uh, actually want to donate and help uh, support this effort. And what's different about this here, because um, if you've ever done any crowdfunding, and I have mentioned this before, uh, I donated to Shenmue 3. I also donated to Bloodstain. Um, with crowdfunding, it, you are an investor. Okay, that's what you're doing. Just think about it as like investing in stocks. Okay, so when you do that, you might not get a return. Okay, you might actually lose, not actually get your investment at all. Like there's been a lot of crowdfunding where the end product either is crappy or it never materializes. Okay, and so with this one, there's still no guarantees. Okay, it should be out January of 2019. That's their goal. Uh, but the reason why I feel more confident about this actually coming to fruition is because first and foremost, this company Purism, if you go to their website, they actually have products already available. You know, they have a, a Purism laptops, you know, that run on this Linux operating system and it's all Debian based, okay, which most Linux distros are. And they already have laptops available, so they have already successfully uh, created products, okay? So you can kind of have more, uh, I guess, more confidence in that the chances of you getting this phone is probably high, okay? And secondly, you know, they've gotten a lot of support from the press, you know, and some people might say that doesn't matter, but it does matter because in the world of marketing, if people don't know about your product or service, then you don't have a product or service. I don't care how good it is because people aren't gonna buy it. And unfortunately in the real world, you need to sell your products in order to keep running, <laughs> okay? So that's why I feel from a business financial point of view, from a visibility point of view, I think Purism, they definitely have a shot at making this work. It will be out in my opinion, okay? And they've already proven it. And so that's why it reaches $1.5 million goal. I'm very impressed by that. It, that's, not, that's not a small amount, you know. And this $1.5 million, um, if you've done any crowdfunding, that's really not the total cost. More than likely, it's like, hey, we were able to raise $1.5 million. So then they could go to their investors 
and get more money. Where that's where the real money is. And so a lot of these Kickstarter things, at least for much larger scale things, this is just to show potential investors that there is an interest in this product or service. They still have to go out and get the initial funding, hire the people, uh, get all the supply chain ready, um, hire all the people due to the customer service, uh, do the marketing, do the branding. There's still a lot involved. So this 1.5 million or whatever it raises in the end, it's it's a it might seem a lot to us, but it's a small amount in the whole scheme of things. Okay, so it's probably going to be way, way more than that. And as this phone picks up more steam, um, you're going to get more support. Okay, so one of the big supporters out of this, which uh, I was really surprised about, is that it's being supported by both GNOME or GNOME and KDE. And so if you use Linux, uh, which most people do, but if you are brand new to Linux, uh, KDE and GNOME is uh, the desktop interface. Okay, so basically how it looks. Okay, so if you are not familiar with that concept, just think about Windows and Apple Mac OS. They look different, right? So that's the different designs, desktop environment. Okay, and so these are the two biggest uh, providers or creators of that look, that desktop environment on Linux. So it's GNOME and KDE. And so they are directly supporting the Prism 5 or Librem uh, 5 Linux phone, which is awesome, okay? And then if you look at all the other support, there are other companies on here too. Let me see. It's been all over the news. OMG Ubuntu, uh, PC Mag, uh, Digital Journal and Gadget. So it's got the marketing already. And so Lily Puting's on there. And so yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited on this. Um, let me see what else is saying. Uh, uh, Lance is saying if this really takes off, maybe companies like Samsung will come out with pure Linux phones. Lance, you're absolutely right. They will. Um, or this is what I'm thinking. If this is successful, okay, and I I know the phone will be released. I know it will, but success is much longer, okay. But if it is successful, meaning there's a critical mass, let's just say the measurement of success for this phone is if it sells 1 million units worldwide in its first year, okay? And that's really not that much. But if it does sell that much, guess what? The big companies, like you mentioned, Slamsung <laughs> or Samsung, or companies like LG, HTC, Motorola, um, and I, I intentionally left Google out of this. But if they see that this is successful, guess what? They have another alternative operating system they could put on their mobile devices that is not controlled by Google. And um, as I mentioned on many videos before, all these phone companies since the beginning of Android, that's, they knew that this was coming. They were worried that Google is going to have too much control. Even though it's open source, it's really not. Okay, because... Honestly, it's really controlled by Google, right? And so um, they didn't have an alternative. And even big companies like Samsung, they tried their own operating system like Tizen. You know, Sailfish, uh, Sailfish OS is another one. Uh, Web OS. Um, there's, there's been many other ones, right? Or even Ubuntu phone up to a certain point. But this will be not only great for people like us or consumers, but it'll be great for businesses as well because it gives them leverage, okay? So I think that's what would happen, Lance. If this does sell a critical mass, I guarantee you Samsung will release their own model with a modified version of the Libre, how do you say, Librem 5 phone with their own Samsung skin, okay? Which they've done successfully on their Tizen OS as well, okay? And so um, Gaza Ip saying, this phone will have heavy security due to their compliance with the Free Software Foundation. If this means that I can't access Google Play, then so be it. Yeah, Gaza, this is, um, so for people who aren't, haven't seen this yet, let me list some of the benefits of this because uh, Purism, the company behind this Librem 5 phone, they've done this to their laptops as well. And so this is, this is why I think people like uh, ourselves who love Linux, this is why this is so appealing, okay? So let me, let me name off a few things, okay? Um, okay, so if you go to the website, they have a comparison chart between Purism Pure OS, 
versus uh, and that would be the Debian based operating system that they will be using to run the phone versus Apple's iOS Google Android so I'm just gonna list off some of the things that it provides that the other two platforms do not provide okay this is directly off the website but honestly this makes me happy okay first and foremost user controls device just like our Linux desktop operating system we control the device which is awesome that's that's already point number one because we control it right so secondly trackers disabled by default awesome you know we talk a lot about data collection privacy okay and um, I feel that and I've mentioned this many times before we need to collect data uh, but at the same time we want some measure of control okay I mean I do not mind sharing my data as long as I can control it as much as possible you're not gonna be able to control everything okay but with like this one I feel like it will have more control of your privacy in my opinion okay so third for that uh, it's this it's the same thing is privacy protection by default so if you use a lot of Android devices right you know a lot of times they'll have like stuff on by default you know whether it's your location and that's not all manufacturers sometimes they'll turn it on by default or they'll turn on an app by default that will actually track you or sometimes on some manufacturers uh, GPS type settings are on by default and I know you could look at all the different security options before you install an app but come on like 99% of people are not gonna look at that you know even geeks okay and then even if you have app control there's still stuff underneath in an operating system which you might not have control over okay that's a reality and I'm specifically talking about Google's Android okay because in iOS you can't you can't do anything anyway and so um, okay it does not track you okay it has layered security protection so that's alluding to what Gaza just mentioned um, it will follow the standards of the uh, free software foundation I think that's what he mentioned user controlled source code which is exactly what we have in the Linux community you know because it's by the users which is awesome okay and it runs GNU Linux which is really what the whole Linux operating system is right GNU slash Linux so that's really what it is it separates the CPU from the cellular baseband now what I like about that is and if I'm understanding this correctly like your phone uh, if it's connected to the actual baseband radios so the actual cellular providers they can still do more tracking on you okay because it's connected that way man and if anybody has any uh, corrections on that they could correct it but by doing this you the CPU isn't tied to that so you could have more control okay so that'd be great I might be wrong with that but I think that's really what it is okay and then they have IP native communication first and then uh, finally decentralized communication by default and so all of this has to do with security control privacy freedom all the things that we love about the desktop operating system and that gets me super happy um, let me answer some things before I like go super crazy happy with that okay so um, okay so Lance says it would be nice to have a phone like a computer you, you can just install whenever you want on it Lance I really think this is gonna be the one my, my opinion ki 2 e saying same Beyblade 420 good morning Beyblade thanks for joining graphical process will be done on a server for the oculus go awesome everyone is spreading a lot of fake news yeah um, blade uh, Beyblade 420 yeah I just read that this morning and so that makes a lot of sense it will be using if I, if I remember correctly what they're estimating is a Snapdragon 821 processor and you know that makes 100% you know for it to run off of their servers on the cloud which every company is doing anyway so then they could have more control over it okay and so uh, similar to what I talked about uh, a few days ago on the Chrome uh, OS browser right and so yeah great point that's exactly how they're going to be providing you the content but at the same time controlling and tracking it as well okay um ki 2 e that makes me wonder about projects like replicant from what i remember was based on android but heavily stripped off google portions and some other stuff ki 2 e I, mean, I haven't heard of that myself but yeah um 
that sounds awesome, but I think this one sounds more awesome, in my opinion, because it doesn't build upon a base uh, of Android, okay, which I think a lot of forks of Android do that, right? So this is from the ground up, it's Linux, you know, from the ground up, you know, I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> so it'll be its own thing, it won't be based off of Android, okay? Uh, so, hey, good morning, Ashimal, thanks for joining. Can you go back to the Oculus? Yeah, Ashley, I'm sorry. Um, I w this will be a shorter episode, so I really won't be going back to that. I'm going to continue talking about the Librem 5. Um, Gaza Imp is saying, I wonder what the price would be par unit for the Librem 5. And then you whispering program. Hey, thanks for joining, you whispering program. Hey, good morning, Geek. Thank you so much for joining. And so, Gaza, in terms of the price, I don't know. Um, I really don't know. But if I had to guess, if I had to guess, okay, because, because this isn't going to be... Uh, backed by a big company right and they're like i told you the steps earlier uh, I, I keep talking about this okay it's it's a business right so you have to think about all these other components right so this is the initial investment so they, they could talk to investors and or venture capitalists who want to invest and then once they get the money now they have to find the manufacturers um you know like whether that's in china whether that's in south america it doesn't matter and all your iPhones, 99% of all your phones are made in China anyway, okay? And so you're going to have to find a manufacturer. And I think Prism, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, they already make laptops. So I'm pretty sure they already have a provider. And then you also need a supply chain, you know, some logistics to make sure that uh, whenever people order your phones, they're able to get it ready. You know, you have to have an assembly line of some sort to get the hardware built, to get the software tested, to get it on the phone, to get it shipped all around the world. So there needs to be a logistical part to it for supply chain management, the, the, the deliveries part of it. And then you have to think about the customer service afterwards as well. Okay. Because if people buy this phone and all of a sudden it's not supporting, they're having issues or they're having security problems, I can guarantee you they will never buy another phone from you again. Okay, and so there's going to be a lot more costs involved with this. And so with all of that being said, my opinion, let's look at the specs real quick. Okay, so we could kind of get an idea. Okay, so wait, it doesn't have specs, but it will have a five inch screen. And if it's not till 2019, my guess is it's going to be $299 to $400. Uh, that is my personal opinion. Okay, now the only way that I could see that it could be lower is if they either make the phone really cheap like you know one of the generic uh, phones from china where you can get from like 99 dollars to you know maybe like 150 dollars but usually those are built really bad unless you're a company like motorola which produces really great budget phones okay and so but my opinion it'll probably be probably be 299 to maybe 400 because i think uh, prism they do want to offer a really high quality experience and I think for people like ourselves who are Linux users, which will be the core demographic of this, Linux users or really hardcore geeks, they'll be the first to purchase this. I will buy it. You know, if it's like $300, I'll buy it if it's high quality. Okay. I mean, or if they do go lower quality, do the Motorola route. You know, uh, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. Uh, unless, point number two, point number two, a large investor comes in. You know, who knows? I, I hope Google doesn't come in on this. Uh... I don't mind if they put in money as long as they don't have a lot of control because if this is successful, like I said earlier, it'll be a threat to Google. It really will. Um, if there's any investors that I could see coming into this from big, big money, I could see Samsung. I could see LG. Uh, HC, well, HTC is going to be bought by Google. Motorola uh, or maybe some of the Chinese companies like Huawei or Shenzhen, or not, Shenzhen Xiaomi. Okay, um, I can see those companies coming in. Why? Because they have something to gain uh, and, like I said, have leverage against Google's Android. Okay, so if there were any big investors, I could see them coming in. Uh, I could see Microsoft coming in. Okay, uh, once again, it's to like basically control the competition. Okay, and so if it's big money, I think it's going to be one of those big companies. And if those big companies come in, then this phone will probably be like 150 to 200 dollars and they're going to sell a ton uh, if it's backed by those companies because they'll have the marketing behind it right and so i don't think that's going to happen uh more than likely 
my guess Gaza is three to four hundred. Um, yeah. So, wow. Yeah. Uh, so, in my opinion, like why I think this would be more successful than any of the other, uh, you know, like attempts at doing a Linux phone, specifically with Ubuntu phone, um, is because I think it's the right time. Okay, and what I mean by that is, uh, you know, mobile phones, smartphones, they are a commodity now. And so from a cost standpoint, you could make a phone for a lot cheaper now than you could even two years ago. And so the, you know, the, the barrier to entry from a cost standpoint is lower. Another thing is, uh, I think people in general, they're more accustomed to using multiple platforms even if they don't realize that they are, okay? And I'm not just talking about Android and iOS. I'm talking about Android, iOS. I'm talking about using an Apple Mac, using uh, Windows 10. I'm talking about using Facebook uh, versus using Twitter uh, versus using Snapchat. So people are used to using many different platforms. I think gone are the days, and about, I think the only demographic that might still be in that, but is Apple users, okay? Apple users are probably, and, and I mean like really hardcore Apple users, they're probably the only demographic left, in my opinion, in the technology space, which will stay strictly all Apple, Apple everything, okay? But even then, you're, they're probably using Facebook, they're probably using Instagram, which is Facebook, they're probably using Snapchat, so they're still using other platforms. And so the second point of it is from a, you know, like a, a worldwide use, people are accustomed to using multiple platforms, okay? And then the final thing is Linux in general. Even though what I said earlier, 99% of people will have no idea what you are saying when you're asking them about what distro they're using, they at least know about Android, okay? And from a business point of view, a lot of businesses use Linux, specifically on the server end. Um, so there is more... Uh, I guess more understanding or at least people know what Linux is okay more so than it was a few years ago okay and most importantly bigger companies have been using mainly thank I mean thankfully because of Android they've been accustomed to developing with the Linux kernel working with open source stuff okay so on the business end their ramp up time is not going to be as uh, I wouldn't say as difficult as before because they already have experience with it and most importantly from a business point of view because Android was so successful and before that within the whole server world open source has proven that it is a viable model okay and so with all those things in place um, that's why I think this uh, this phone uh, with this Linux based OS purely Linux based OS will have a better shot of success okay and I really do hope that it comes to fruition and it does have some success, but 2019 is a long way, okay? A lot of things can happen before then. Um, if anything, Google or Apple or whatever, they, they might have another alternative, okay? Or, or their operating system might be so much better by that point. Who knows, okay? Or there might be other Linux distros uh, that already do mobile really well by 2019. So there's a lot of different variables. But to me, this is exciting news. This is something that, you know, I've talked about so many times and I think a lot of Linux users, and I mean, when I say Linux users, I mean Linux desktop users, okay? I'm not talking about people who run Linux servers and stuff because they've been around way before any of this came. I'm talking about people who use Linux desktop operating systems every single day or regularly who actually enjoy all the benefits of Linux in that way and who want the same experience on their mobile device and um, if this is successful my opinion is even if this is not successful Linux will eventually have its own pure base and like I mentioned in previous videos a lot of the distros I know they're gonna make it mobile uh, ready mobile enhanced and so in the future we will have more uh, options like this and so I hope that this is successful quicker so that we can get to that a lot quicker you know and so that we can have not only our desktop where we have the same freedoms and all the benefits that we get out of Linux, but also on our mobile device, on our phones. But then if this works well here, well, 
you could translate that to your tablet you could translate that to your smart home devices where I'm like really concerned about that you know like I talked about that last episode with Google Home Amazon Echo Apple TV man that's like tracking everywhere and so if you could do something like this and then hey let's put this same um, operating system on a smart device and it'll work that I think that's a dream you know I think that's everybody's dream all these big companies they want a single OS uh, obviously their main dream as I mentioned before they want everything on the cloud okay on the internet but um, if you're talking about on multiple devices that you can install be awesome to have one distro that you download you can put it on your desktop uh, you could put it on your phone you could put it on your tablet you can install it on your microwave and refrigerator and it will adapt accordingly you could use it for your car so that you don't have to use Android's OS on there so there's a lot of ramifications there but I'm super excited uh, I'm very uh, happy that uh, they have reached their goal and what I will do after this video I will leave uh, the link to Purism's crowdfunding site in the description area below and as I stated they have reached their goal and they're actually at 1.68 million dollars um, let's just say 1.7 million and there's still nine days to go uh, so if this is something that you uh, wanted to donate to uh, I will leave it in the description area below. And so, um, like I said, I have to like close this episode off early this week. So that's why I only had two topics. But as always, I want to thank all of you for joining uh, this show. Thanks for getting up early, at least here in the United States. If you're in other parts of the world, maybe it's not morning. It's probably nighttime. Thank you so much for uh, staying up, being on the show, contributing. Thanks, Lance. Thanks, as always, for joining. Um, if you had any additional comments, any of your own thoughts, as always, you can leave it down there. And as always, if you did get value out of these videos, leave a like and subscribe. And if you wanted to support my channel further, you could do that at patreon.com forward slash geek outdoors. We'll see you on another live episode.